Welcome back to the last of the Matplotlib videos. I've said several times there's lots of flexibility in Matplotlib. You can plot just about any sort of graph, chart, plot, whatever that you want. And there's a whole heap just built in. There's over 40 built in. We've so far covered exactly one of them, the simple line plot, in different ways. As you've seen already, even within each of those basic plot types, there's a whole heap of options. So here's some of the other ones that you might need, bar charts, histograms, scatter plots, step plots, pie charts, bleh, hate pie charts, box plots for statistical stuff, contour plots, and so on. I'm just going to look at two of these. We don't have time in this course to cover more than that. You can read the documentation. Each of them is essentially just a function call. You just have to figure out what options you need to pass into it. Let's look at bar charts and histograms. First of all, bar charts. Very common way of displaying the relative magnitudes of a set of measures of some normally named category. In this case, the names are the names of some materials, aluminium, brass, concrete, copper, iron, steel, and so on. And we're displaying the relative magnitudes of their elasticities. Good graphical presentation. Other examples might be, for example, displaying the uh, different smoking behaviours in different ethnic groups, the different uh, marks that are obtained by students in different age groups, and so on. Infinite number of options here. So let's just look at this one. Here's the data that presented it or produced it. It's that particular global variable, elasticity. It takes the form of what we call a zipped list. It's a list of tuples, each of which is a pair of values. Now, you may or may not have been familiar with zips, zipped type formats. Let's just quickly look at one, look at something. Here's a couple of variables, names and ages. There's three names, there's three ages. I can zip those up. First of all, I'd better run that script to get those. I can zip those up by calling the zip function, zip names and ages. What I get displayed isn't immediately helpful. It says it's a zip object. To make it look interesting, I have to make it into a list. And I'm going to save it as well as a variable zipped. So if I do that, I have a new variable zipped, which is a list. If I look at that list, I discover it's a list of the pairs. Fred paired with 10, Alison with 15, Bruce with 20, and so on. The question then arises, how do I unzip that? You would think I would call an unzip function, wouldn't you? Well, actually, I don't. And this is discussed in detail in the lab. I don't want to waste too much time on it. I just want to show you that there is a relatively easy way to unzip, and it's to use the zip function itself in conjunction with a slightly magical thing called a star parameter. I'm going to zip the starred zipped list. This is kind of weird and magical. To understand it properly, you should look at the, um, at the lab. But you'll see what we get here is two tuples rather than lists, but they're just sequences. They'll do fine. The first one is all the values from the first list. The second one is all the ages. Right, with that little interlude over, we now know how to unzip this list of elasticity. So let's proceed to do that. We get the materials and the elasticities out with that statement there, as we've just seen. So the materials is the list aluminium, brass, concrete, etc. Elasticities is the other column. And now I just have to plot it. To do that, I need myself a pair of axes, a set of axes, I should say. Axes equals plot.axes, just as before. And then I'm in a position to plot a bar chart, which takes, first of all, the x coordinates of all the bars, which I'm going to use the range function to generate myself a suitable list from naught to the length of the materials. And then I need the heights of the bars, which is the elasticities. So it's as simple as that, more or less. Plus, I have to show, at least on Linux, I have to show the final graph. So there it is. Let's just see what we get to see how we're going first. And we get a plot. Has the right sort of general look to it, but it's not very well labeled. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are the coordinates of the bars, not their names. So we have to add an extra parameter. The extra parameter, as you can probably see in the slide on your left, is called tick underscore label. Label singular, just to confuse me. And it's equal to the materials. That is the list of the names there. So with that slight change, let's have a look. We are hopefully waiting for action. There it is. Aluminium, brass, concrete, and so on. Heights of the bars. I haven't yet put a title on it and the X and Y labels, but that's exactly as before. We don't need to do that. So that's bar charts. There's a whole heap of documentation that you should check up on. You can set the colors of the bars. You can start them at different heights so you can stack them up and a whole heap of other things. Read the documentation. That's the basics. Enough on bar charts. Now we move to the last of the chart types we're going to do in this video, histograms. 
Hopefully you all know what histograms are, you have some data, you want to see how it's distributed, so you sort it into bins, all the items in, naught to, in the range 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, or whatever. And you count how many items land up in each bin, and you plot a sort of bar chart of that distribution. That's the sort of shape you get. So how do we do that in Matplotlib turns out to be wonderfully easy, e easy. So first of all, we have to have some data if we're going to plot anything, and I'm going to call it samples, and I'm going to generate it randomly using the wonderful NumPy random module, which happens to have a normal function in it, which gives you samples from a normal distribution. That's the Gaussian bell-shaped curve thingy that you're all familiar with, I kind of hope. So we're going to pull out values around a median, uh, sorry, a um, mean of 100, the average value, the mean, which over here is called mu, and we have to specify the standard deviation, which is going to be 15 in this case, that's the width of the distribution, and how many data points we'd like. I'm going to go with 2,000. And now I have to plot a histogram of them. How do I do that? Well, first of all, I give myself some axes, and then it's all wonderfully easy. I just go axes.hist. I don't even have to go histogram. Axes.hist of the samples. That's if I know nothing about them and I want to see what they look like. That's often the case when you've got a whole heap of data in a big file. Maybe millions, tens of millions of data points. Let's see what they look like first. You do that. Finally, we'd better show the plot if we're on Linux, whatever. Let's see what that gives us. So we run that and we get, drum roll, waiting, a histogram. Oh, goodness me, the numbers or the data appears to be sort of normally distributed. No great surprise in this case, but it could be if it was data from a random file. So let's make it look better. Let's first of all get a few more bars in it few more bins. So I can say how many bins I want, or I can say what bin distribution I'd like, 0 to 10, 10 to 20. I'm just going to go with a simple number. I'm going to say I want 20 bins. I can set the face colour to green, for example, if I like a different colour. And let's just look at that one for a start. So that gives me uh, different colours and more bars, so I get a better view of the distribution. And as I start to feel, get a better feel for it, I might want to do different things with it. For example, I might want to turn it into a density plot. So a density plot, or a normalised plot, essentially normalises everything. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. I'm going to say density is true. And with a density plot, the y-axis is now sort of like a probability. It is a, it's essentially the integral under that curve is now 1 and the integral up to any particular x value is uh, essentially the fraction of the numbers that lie less than or equal to that x. So that's a density plot. And that's pretty much what I have there in the example, except that in this particular example I've also plotted a nice line on it. So that line that you're seeing, the yellow line, is the actual original Gaussian function from which the distribution was derived. And it's nice to plot that as well. How do I do that? Well, in order to do that, I need to know where all the bars landed up. So it turns out that there's a return value from histogram, which tells me three things. It's a tuple. It tells me the counts in the various bins. I'm going to call that the ends. It tells me where the bin edges were. I'm going to call that X's for the purposes of this. It also gives me the um, actual rectangles that it plotted. I'm going to ignore that for now. I'm going to call that the underscore to throw it away. In the figure over here, we've called it patches, which is what they are. They're the actual rectangles, coloured green, that get drawn. With that information, I'm now in a position to compute all the y's at all of the uh, x values. That is the actual shape of the function, the Gaussian, that was being sampled from. I'm not going to go through the formula for a Gaussian. You may or may not know it already. There it is. You'll notice that it's got x's in it at one point. That's the e to the power of x minus mu squared. So you can look up the function for a Gaussian. That's it, essentially. And then I just plot a curve, axes dot plot x's and y's. But I have introduced one new thing, y minus minus. The thir third parameter there is a new compact way of saying what sort of line you'd like. In this case, we've asked for a 
Y for yellow, minus minus for dashed line. So we get a yellow dashed line. Line width we still have to do as a separate parameter. This is just a shorthand notation to save you saying what the line colour is and what the line style is. There's a whole heap of these. You can look them up, look them up in the documentation. And obviously I've also got to add the X labels and Y labels and a title. Haven't done that yet. I finish up with this thing here. So that's kind of it for histograms. If you want to plot anything else, you'd better start looking on the, through the documentation. And just to get going, there's some other sample plots there. That's all I want to say in this video. I hope you've enjoyed Matplotlib. Thanks for watching. Bye.